Yes, we're doing another supplemental episode. The history of the moniker of Supergirl is long and varied. There have technically been four incarnations that have appeared on and off since 1959. I say technically because there were actually a few one-off Supergirls before that. The first appearance of a Supergirl goes back to the fifth issue of Superboy, which came out in 1949. This issue concerned a teenage monarch named Lucy of Borogonia, who plays with Superboy's heart into helping her win a beauty contest. Thrilling. The next time a Supergirl popped up was in issue 78 of Superboy, which came out a few years later. In the story, Superboy saved an alien named Charlaw from a spaceship crash. However, after he criticized her driving, the alien turned Clark Kent into Claire Kent to teach him some humility. Finally, there was issue number 123 of Superman, which came out in 1958. This saw Jimmy Olsen wish a Supergirl into existence to be a sidekick for Superman. This one would ultimately sacrifice herself trying to protect the Man of Steel from a fallen kryptonite boulder that a criminal had dropped on him. Now that last appearance actually served as kind of a test run to see if the public would be open to the idea of a Supergirl. The idea proved pretty popular, so roughly a year later, the Man of Tomorrow would be introduced to his cousin, Kara Zor-El. Kara was from the Kryptonian city of Argo, which managed to survive Krypton's destruction thanks to the work of her parents, Zor-El and Allura. However, that survival was short as Argo began getting bombarded with meteors. Kara was placed in a spacecraft and sent to Earth to live with her cousin Kal-El as his exploits were already known to the citizens of Argo. Superman wanted Kara's existence to be kept on the down low so he could use her as a secret weapon. So he placed her in an orphanage under the name Linda Lee alongside the disguise of a pair of glasses and a brunette wig. Kara would work in secret as Supergirl even when she was adopted by Fred and Etna Danvers a couple of years later, thus becoming Linda Lee Danvers. This new Supergirl proved to be extremely popular, eventually becoming the lead in the anthology book Adventure Comics and getting two solo series, the first in 1972 and the second in 1982. Kara even got her own Earth 2 counterpart in the form of Justice Society of America member Power Girl, who is Karazor L, that's the letter L instead of E-L. Now I'd get more into Power Girl, but that story is so complicated it's going to have to wait for its own episode. Along the way, Supergirl would join her cousin's teen incarnation as a member of the Legion of Superheroes. She would also make a lot of friends along the way, gaining romantic interest from an Atlantean named Jero, a fellow orphan named Richie Malvern, and her Legion of Superheroes teammate Brainiac 5. Of course, none of these suitors would measure up to Supergirl's horse, Comet. Comet was actually a centaur who got turned into a full equus. Then, whenever his celestial namesake would appear in the sky, Comet would turn into a full human and become Kara's boyfriend. You know, there are really better ways to avoid the token love interest. However, the good times were not to last. During the 1985 Crisis on Infinite Earths event, Supergirl was killed by the central villain of the piece, the Anti-Monitor. The reasons behind the death were that DC higher-ups felt that Superman had too many fellow Kryptonians around. In other words, the last son of Krypton was not the last son of Krypton. In addition to Kara, there were also Crypto the Superdog, Peppa the Supermonkey, and several Kryptonians who escaped the Phantom Zone. It also didn't help too much that the previous year's Supergirl movie had bombed at the box office. As the DC Universe was rebooted in the wake of the Crisis event, it was decreed that Superman was the last Kryptonian and there couldn't be any more Kryptonians running around. He also didn't have the Adventures of Superboy, which wound up affecting Legion of Superheroes continuity. Added to that, a new problem popped up with Supergirl when it turned out the trademark on her name was nearing expiration. If DC wanted to keep the trademark on Supergirl, they had to publish Supergirl. So, one editor kind of took it upon himself to hint in a holiday issue the idea that Kara Zor-El was trapped in some form of ether dimension and could possibly return someday. It succeeded in getting that editor, Mark Wade, fired. Instead, DC decided to take a different route. Enter Matrix. Matrix came from an Earth that occupied a pocket dimension where three Kryptonian renegades had somehow fallen into after Krypton blew up. After becoming aware of the proper DC Universe Superman's exploits on that Earth, the Lex Luthor of the pocket dimension created a sentient protoplasm. The protoplasm already had the ability to shapeshift, so Luthor infused some Superman's genetic material into the protoplasm, which allowed Matrix to take a more humanoid form. In addition to sharing Superman's strength and flying abilities, Matrix also had telekinesis and cloaking abilities. After dealing with the three Kryptonians, Matrix elected to return to the DC Universe proper with Superman as the new Supergirl. Matrix would go on to play a significant role in the Superman comics going onward, even filling in for the Man of Steel after he died taking on the monster Doomsday. She would even gain a new romantic interest in the form of Lex Luthor II, who took over his father's company after Lex I died of a kryptonite-induced cancer. 
Except it was then revealed that Lex II never existed. He was actually a clone that Lex I had transferred his consciousness into. So, yeah, Supergirl still can't get a normal romance. On one occasion, Matrix happened across a teenage runaway whose boyfriend had lured her into being a sacrifice in a demon summoning ritual. Matrix intervened, which caused her to merge with a teenager named Linda Danvers. This transformed both into an avatar for an angelic being who became the new Supergirl, though with severely reduced powers. You may have noticed this new Linda Danvers Matrix Supergirl combination has donned similar garments to the one the Supergirl from the Superman the Animated Series wore. That wasn't Matrix, that was still Kara zor -El, Superman's cousin. This new Linda Matrix Supergirl would end up getting her own series, which would run for 80 issues. The final story arc would prove oddly memorable, as Kara zor -El suddenly returned to the mainstream DC Universe. This was, in fact, a pre-crisis Kara who'd been pulled out of time with Linda being aware that Kara was fated to die. To that end, Linda and Kara switched places, allowing Linda to live out Kara's life. Also, Linda fell in love and wound up marrying the Superman from this timeline. Remember, the two aren't cousins, so technically it's okay, I guess. Unfortunately, it turned out for the timeline to be stabilized, Kara had to return and die in the process. So, Linda left her husband and child in the timeline dimension along with Supergirl, and after that, well... Not too long after the Supergirl series he was writing ended, Peter David launched a new book at DC called Fallen Angel. The main character of the series, who would act as a moral arbiter that decided who was and was not worth saving, seemed to bear a lot of similarities to Linda Danvers. David has played coy to the Angel's identity, however, the series, while acclaimed, was cancelled after 20 issues, though DC would allow David to take it to IDW Publishing as long as there were no connections to the DC Universe. Around this time, a new Supergirl appeared in the form of Sir L, Superman's daughter from a techno-dystopian future where the Man of Steel had become a murdering cyborg. However, it turns out this apocalypse was going to be initiated by Sir L, who was unknowingly carrying a techno-organic virus, so she sacrificed herself to avert that future from ever happening. This is where I end up setting the stage for a big return. Legend has it that newly hired DC executive editor Dan DiDio was visiting Six Flags Magic Mountain shortly before beginning his job at the company. While waiting in line at the Superman ride, he noticed a large display with several characters' descriptions on it. He began to focus on the one of Supergirl, describing her as a partial clone of Superman and a pearl-plasmic natrix who bonded with an angel and a runaway teenager and came to one conclusion. That doesn't make a lick of sense. Supergirl should just be Superman's cousin. Now, I can't say how exact this story is. There are several people who have credited to deal with the idea of bringing back Kara zor -El, but the fact of the matter is that whole no more Kryptonians rule that DC was so steadfast on in the late 80s, early 90s, well, it was kind of weakening. By the turn of the millennium, a lot of the pre-crisis Superman things, like the bottled city of Kandor, Crypto the Superdog, even Superboy to an extent, or at least the idea of Superboy, had all slowly worked their way back into continuity. And like I said before, the Superman animated series did Kara zor as Supergirl. So I think eventually Supergirl would have returned as Kara zor at some point. Didio was probably just the first to really come up with the idea. Kara zor -El re-debuted in the pages of Batman Superman. Her origin was changed slightly so that her rocket was launched at the same time as Kal-El's. Unfortunately, the rocket was caught up in kryptonite debris, which would go on to form a large asteroid. Kara was kept in suspended animation as the asteroid floated through the cosmos, eventually making its way towards Earth. Since the asteroid was large enough to possibly destroy the Earth, Lex Luthor, who was president of the United States at the time, launched several nuclear missiles at it in an attempt to destroy it. It wasn't enough, and it took the combined efforts of Batman and Superman to eventually destroy the rock. This resulted in Kara's ship being freed and crashing into Gotham Harbor, where she soon emerged and reunited with her cousin. From there, Supergirl would go on to brief memberships in both the Teen Titans and the Outsiders, the latter of which saw her getting involved in a minor love triangle with Nightwing and Owen Harkness, the son of Flashville and Captain Boomerang. Sadly, this still qualifies as the most normal Supergirl romantic entanglement I've covered so far. Kara's biggest contribution came during the massive New Krypton event. This saw her experience a reunion with her parents zor and Allura. Sadly, it would soon fall apart, and Kara would eventually adopt a familiar civilian identity on Earth, Linda Lee. 2011 saw the DC Universe go through another reboot with its controversial New 52 lineup. One of the initial launch titles was a new Supergirl book, which is what we're going to be covering in our next episode. So join us for Supergirl's first New 52 adventure, The Last Daughter of Krypton.
help support my channel at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions. There you can request a trade to be put in the randomizer, aka the cardboard box. Also remember, like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.